Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell. I got Tyler over on the boards, and we're back for another edition. <laughs> Are y'all ready? Back from where? Back from uh, our Bahamas trip. That's my shells vacation. I call that the shells vacation. I take you after hunting season. So. Vacation. Yeah, it's the vacation. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of missed Mardi Gras while we were gone. I didn't miss a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I had Mardi Gras for like a week. I don't think I don't know if my liver can take it anymore. I need to, I'm on. I'm in a detox mode for a little while. Probably not going to cook anything this weekend, Shell. I need to have like juices and. A cleanse or something? No ribeyes and no, no, no red meat. <laughs> Maybe no, no poultry. It's just fruit and juices. Yeah. Fruit and juices, vegetables. Yep. Anything that'll clean you out, detox your liver. <laughs> we had a great time. We had a wonderful time. I mean, there's something about unlimited pina coladas. <laughs> 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 just get you. I've gotten to the point where I get tired of drinking the. The sweet, sweet stuff before yeah. I get. That's the way I was. 50. I would just have beer. I, hey, I am a fan of it's a Calic Calic Light. Yeah, Calic and and uh, Sands. Yeah, that was the two local Bahamian beers that we had. I did go buy some Bud Lights from the gift shop one day. <laughs> I was like, I just need something normal. <laughs> I didn't have Miller Lights. So I said, I'll tell you, they had Bud Light. I think they had Corona, and that was about it as far as domestic options. I found some Guinness at a, at the pub though. I did drink some Guinness few times made friends with the bartender he, oh yeah he, he loved you oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big line. you came walking by our candy he's like hi ah, it's my buddy <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that guy's okay <laughs> you were in there singing carrying on one night i don't night. even think people were singing i just was <laughs> <laughs> No music, just no. Oh no, Tyler! We had people stopping us, and was like, "Oh, hey, it's the singing people." And, and, and she's like, "We really enjoyed the entertainment." This was an older lady. I was like, "Dang, I was not that bad." It's like in a bar. So there was a piano guy playing in one corner. But you know how you go and before you go in a restaurant, sometimes they'll have a bar, and then they'll have a guy over in the corner just playing like. I don't know, smooth sounds. Ambiance. Ambiance yeah. music. Well, he started daring me. That's what it was. I told Shell. I said, this guy's daring me. I said, if, <laughs> he was playing. There was no and communication I could, between him would, and this piano yeah, man. Yeah, no, this I don't think he'd like, see me. <laughs> but he was playing, and I said, if he if he starts playing piano, man, it's over, Shell. And then, there you go, next song. It <laughs> started into I'm it. I'm pretty sure you hollered out, hey, play piano, man. Oh, did I? <laughs> Those just, were after a few filthy martinis. Just but... The great thing about that was the dude sitting next to me says, hey, I play guitar. And so he started singing with me. And so we just had our own little band going with the piano guy. So every time I went back in that bar, that dude would key it back up. <laughs> I was like, no, that's not me. I'd put my head down, my sunglasses on. But that wasn't me, man. I don't know why you're doing that. I'm not the entertainment. <laughs> there was one night you thought you were the entertainment. I should have been on stage one time. <laughs> we had conch salad. A lot of conch salad. What is conch? It's I guess it's a mollusk. Wouldn't you say it grows in the big conch? You know, everybody's seen the conch shell. It's the one you, you yeah, know, you the see big, them blow. Pink, pretty yeah. shells. Yeah, it's a giant. It's a giant shell that you can hear the ocean in. They're technically sne- sea snails. Hmm. Did not know that. <laughs> so it's a bug salad. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ate escargot one night too, though. Yeah. It was good. I wonder if those were baby conks they fed us, and we just didn't know it. <laughs> you didn't know. Yeah. The thing with escargot is it, it really only tastes like what they cook it in. It didn't have any flavor except a lot of garlic and a lot of butter. And so the juices that you got it out of this little tray they served the escargot in, It's we just dip bread in it. and <laughs> Man, it's so good. I never tried it before. I'm going to have to. Yeah, it's. I, I recommend it. If you see it on the menu, try it. It's kind of like garlic butter mushroom. Yeah, I've had some bad. And then I've had some. I've good. had it. I have had it kind of earthy before, and I didn't care for that. But this one, you can taste delicious. Conch salad can be really tough though, too. I yeah. had some that was really tender, and I had some that was like yeah, rubber like rubber bands. bands. Mm-hmm. I, and you know they don't cook it. So what do you think? It's just the age of the conch. What makes some of it? Uh, you know what I think it is? 
it's how fine they chop it. Because when we went, I mean, it's been five years ago, we went to uh, Abaco or to Green Turtle Key, and the guy did a demo on how to make conch salad. And he chopped it super fine. And it, like, the texture of it was good. Yeah. But if you have it in bigger pieces, like I think that one you're talking about was, it's, it is kind of tough. But to me, I, I think it's, they don't say it's like a pico, but that's what it tastes like to me. It's like yeah. fresh tomatoes, onions, uh, usually bell pepper or something like that in and it. Ha- and then jalapeno. Yeah, it's spicy. I don't think I don't know if it's jalapeno though. Something spicy. Because all those man. all those Bahamian guys that when when I've talked to them about when they're making and stuff, it's always I grow my own peppers. They're the hottest peppers in the world. And you know <laughs> what kind is it? Oh, it's just the hottest. <laughs> you can't take it. You're from the mainland. I was like, okay, you know, and they're never that that hot. Yeah. <laughs> now I did get one sauce that I don't know what it was. I think it was like had to be Scotch bonnet of some kind. But man, that stuff would light you up. You asked that lady. I want the hot sauce. That was for the snapper. Gave you the hot yeah. sauce. I put some of it on that conch salad, and it was a mistake. <laughs> so we went. It took to- a lot of sky juice to to cool that off. So we went to um, one place. It was like a local spot called the Fish Fry. Yeah. And it's basically like a food truck alley, but kind they're not food trucks. It's more like yeah. a food shack alley. Yeah. It's all these. Do you go indoors? They all have like like a shack front. Then you go inside, and it's like a restaurant. They have TVs and stuff. And then we we wanted to go to the ones that were the locals went. So it was at O Anders. Yeah. Was the one that we went to, and it was fantastic. And then we went to another one to get jerk chicken what was it called uh goldies goldies yeah those are my two favorite but, but when you go there it's like all these guys out in the road they're like, best in fish fry best in fish fry come in this one come in this one so they're constantly trying to like carnival bark you <laughs> into their sta- there you know I, guess, I don't know if they post them up out front like the little caesar's person that spins the little thing yeah you know? yeah that's kind of felt like what it was if you've ever walked on like bourbon street and go past, past the strip clubs the guy's trying to get you <laughs> yeah, into the strip club like. similar thing but for food yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but man we had um i called it fried snapper but it's pretty much a whole fish and like you don't like me and shell only got one thing because the serving sizes are so big and they give you like this platter and it's not a true Bahamian dish if it doesn't come with rice and peas. So it came with a bunch of rice and peas, which this was kind of like a fried rice almost. Uh, yeah. With, with some kind of bean or pea in it. It's, it was, it's good. I liked it. Yeah. I don't like rice. That's yeah. not really my jam. But And then it's like a whole snapper, head on, There's eyeballs. There's two of those on there. And then you get two sides, and they're big macaroni and cheese. They call it macaroni and cheese. It's like a macaroni bake because it's not creamy. But it, yeah. I mean, it has cheese to it, but it almost cuts out like a casserole you, piece or something. I was thinking you could cut that out and fry it up really oh, easily. Yeah. yeah. Probably pretty good like that, too. Yeah. And then what was the other one? The potato, potato salad. salad. Everything went with t- potato salad. Bomb potato salad. I'm talking some of the best. I mean, I could make a good potato. You could got a good potato salad. This potato salad was awesome. So we had this whole conversation. We felt like. The, pota- the other people that were with us said the same thing. The potatoes that we had in the Bahamas tasted so much better. I don't like know. The French fries were better. Potato salad. It was like the potatoes. Had I don't flavor. think they're out of. So my thing is, I don't think they're like Idaho potatoes, like we're used to. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was like I don't. They taste um, less starchy. Like they're not super starchy, and they have a lot of flavor. So it's almost like everything's a like a Yukon Gold, but better. Yeah. And they have that kind of yellow tinge to them when they fry them up or however they cook them, like even in the potato salad. And I'd like to see what those so, potatoes look like, you know, before they turn them into stuff. So I did some research, like surely we're not the only people to think that, you know. So yeah. I did some research and I couldn't find much, you know, why the Bahamas potatoes taste better. Not a lot came up. Um, but I did like try to see what potatoes they actually grew native there. And they have one called a Casa Vera which is a root vegetable. It looks a lot like a potato. So I'm wondering if that's what we were Maybe having. Maybe it was. I yeah. don't know. It was very interesting. I'd like to talk to one of their chefs about the potatoes yeah. they use. I'll tell you what else impressed me, and I don't know if it's because we only get them a certain time of the year, but it's their tomatoes. Even in February, they have that sun-kissed taste to them, to where it's acidic. It tastes like it's been ripened in the sun, and it's like our best tomatoes in July, you know, and and. That was just a normal thing for them. So anything they had tomatoes with or on, I mean, the flavor was fantastic. It, it, it tasted. I know tomatoes are a fruit technically, but it tasted like a fruit oh, almost. Sweet yeah, and acidic, and I mean, it just was fantastic. 
What was your favorite thing? Like when you go to the Caribbean, what's your favorite thing that you get? I mean, I love the fresh like conch salad. Any raw fish I can get. Yeah. I'm all about that. Um the smoked salmon. That's what I was gonna say. As far as what I ate on this past trip, it was the smoked salmon. That stood out. Lamb chops. And uh I'm not a lamb person and I had some fantastic lamb chops. And uh there was an antipasta bar. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It was oh, like that's our charcuterie, huge charcuterie board, and then like just a just a whole table full of breads and butters, all different <laughs> kinds of breads and butters and and pestos. They and, had a and I wouldn't try this. They had a bowl of fish that <laughs> she'll try. <laughs> it was a bowl anchovies. of fish. <laughs> it was anchovies. How, well, it was for like a Caesar salad thing. It was like a really nice Caesar salad buffet thing. So I got a couple anchovies. They melted in your mouth. Uh, They're so good. It just looked like a bowl of bait. <laughs> That I could not eat that. That's something I could like. I'll try a lot of stuff, but if it's just a little, like I got it out of a rappella pack in the fishing <laughs> section at Walmart or Bass Pro or somewhere, that's what it looked like. You did eat raw fish. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, they have a really good, you know, sushi is a, a big thing in Nassau where we were. There's a lot of really good sushi restaurants, and the resort we stayed at had one that's fantastic. Yeah. But you raw normally. Tuna, like, I was eating raw tuna. I was eating. Uh, what was the other one? Salmon? I guess salmon tataki or something like that. And that's was, been cooked a little bit, I guess. I don't know. Juices. I don't know, but it was fantastic. Um, I would say the jerk chicken is not as good as it is. Not in America. Jamaica. Yeah, I, I was disappointed in that. We I had would say disappointed, but yeah, I was just. It was it's just not like jerk chicken. Chicken spicy. It's barbecue. not jerk chicken. Yeah. Like to me, jerk to be real traditional jerk chicken, you have to make the jerk marinade. And it goes on the chicken, and the chicken sits in it. And then it's prepared over a charcoal grill. You know, they have it set up kind of two-zoned where they can get some sear on it and get it working, and they can move the chicken around on the grill. And it gets all that grill flavor to it. And there's no, like, sweet barbecue sauce over it at the end. Well, this all every jerk chicken we tried in the Bahamas had this, like, it had jerk flavor, but it was like they took that, is it Walker wood or yeah, that that one stuff you can get in the bottle and added barbecue sauce to it, and that was what they were calling jerk chicken. I wasn't even at the fish fry place. They did it. There was like people told us go there for the jerk chicken. Well, it wasn't like I want to see the grill. I want to see where you cook it. I want it to come out in foil, and I wanted to have the char on it and all that. I didn't get that. But it was that's cool. okay. When I get my when I decide to fire the grill back up here in a few days, that's, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. <laughs> some good, some jerk. authentic jerk. Yeah. yeah. Or is it thin as you can make as it? As thin as I can make it. Yeah. And I, do, I do like a jerk seasoning. You know, I have a jerk seasoning, mm-hmm. and I always put that on it, but the, the marinade's what makes it. That's where you get your flavor and your spice, and the so chicken gets tender from it. When you make jerk chicken, how do you, what's that process? Just real quickly. Usually I start with all the fresh ingredients. You got to have, you know, you got to have some peppers. If you can get scotch bonnets, great. Habaneros will work. Um, you know, it needs, it needs the onion. It needs the citrus juice. It needs all those flavors. In the marinade, you blend that up, and it kind of turns it into a chunky salsa-ish marinade. I mean, it's you know, it doesn't look great. It's kind of green and brown and all that, but you put your chicken in a bowl or pan, and you cover it and all that. A lot of times I'll take and cut slits in my chicken. like And, and you use big pieces of chicken. Like, you know, you got the, the whole breast, the leg quarters. A lot of times it's breast and wing in one piece, even the back, and then you just cut slits in the thicker pieces so that marinade can get down in there. And it needs to sit on it. Overnight's best. The next day, you take it out of that marinade and put it on the grill. And you can do it on a smoker, but I like to do it on charcoal because it really gets a good flavor. Now, in, the, in Jamaica, they use they burn down like pimento wood. But we don't have that here. So a lot of times, I just use charcoal or lump or whatever I got and then add some of my wood that, you know, whatever, uh, hickory, oak, uh, cherry, whatever you got, pecan. But if you got pimento, use that. And that's what gives it its flavor. You cook it till it's done, and then you serve it with a sauce. Direct, indirect, um, both, <laughs> a little both, bit of both, a little bit of both. I like starting it out direct, getting some sear and some char on it, and then moving it over so you don't just burn it up, and you have a cool side, and you let it finish off, and you cook it till it's done, and then you serve it with the sauce. But it's not like a barbecue sauce. It's almost like if you want it mild, it's more on the lines of a like a salsa verde kind of. Yeah. 
And then they have a hot one that's got a lot of the scotch bonnet in it that makes it even hotter. But that's you how don't... it's served. But you don't like base that on or coat it in it or anything. I've never had real jerk chicken that was done like that, like in a in almost like a barbecue sauce. That's more like barbecue jerk. I guess. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't the real deal. Yeah, I'm with you. I like that dry skin. The, where it gets crispy, crispy and you got the crunchy charred edges and stuff. That's what gives it its flavor. And often they'll put it in foil and that kind of makes it tender too. You know, when they serve it, you kind of unwrap it and then there you go. You pull it off the bone and dip it in that sauce. In that sauce. Drink you a red that stripe. Good. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have any. You don't get red stripes in the bone. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say they had, a, everywhere we went, they had a really good tartar sauce. That was, you know, different too, because I wasn't expecting that. It wasn't like Most a southern time, tartar sauce. It was the, velvety. The last time we went, um, it was Calypso sauce. And it was almost like a mayonnaise, scotch bonnet, pepper, kind of ketchup-y sauce. Looked like something you get at, um, what, Raising Cane's or somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, But with the island vibe. Well, this. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, That's good. Yeah. This time, everywhere, everything was served with a tartar sauce. So we had some really good ones. It was almost like they blended it or. Yeah. Puree, like, it was like, you knew it had dill pickle flavor but you could not see any kind of you know chunks of anything in it it was smooth yeah so i think you're right i think they did i think they prepared it and then put it in some kind of emulsion blender or Emulsi- something and yeah. got it super super smooth and it had all the flavor of a tartar sauce but uh but it, you didn't get the chunks like but it had a velvety texture yeah you yeah. know it was really good would they you serve consider- that with the fried stuff yeah would you consider doing your tartar sauce that way Making it up, um, or do you prefer it chunky? I like mine chunky. I like so I I put like finely finely chopped onion in it. I like dill pickle relish. Yeah. I don't like sweet relish in my tartar sauce. Um, you know, I like having some pepper in there where you can see it. A little bit of hot sauce, but mainly like blue plate mayo. That's the base of it. All the mayo down the Bahamas was like Heinz mayo that I saw. Cause they would they have don't it. know. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> New Orleans needs to send them some blue plate over there. <laughs> <laughs> they like their mayo, though. Yeah, I did like that about them. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the table. Like. Yeah, everywhere you went, <laughs> mayo was on the table. I'm like, heck yeah. I guess they eat it with fries. Maybe that's what they're <laughs> Maybe so. I did. I guess because they are, you know, well, it has British, British influence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So what was your favorite food? Man, if I had to pick one. That's tough. That's real tough. I had some good stuff. I'm I'm probably gonna have to go to the conch salad just because I never get it, and it's so like it's not something it's you light. Can, you can recreate a jerk chicken yeah, at home. Yeah, but you can't yeah. recreate conch salad. Yeah, it's a really good con. I'm, I was trying to think of the other best bite I had. That's up there. I mean, the smoked salmon. I had a good eggs Benedict for breakfast one morning. That's something I don't get a lot. My favorite. Yeah, yeah, oh, man, that's what I would get. We Room service every morning would be smoked salmon with the bagel and tomatoes and all that, and then we'd get an ex Benedict and split it. Heck, yeah. Split it. With a pot. <laughs> they did have Jamaican coffee. What's different about Jamaican coffee? Oh, it's the best coffee I've ever had. Yeah, it really is. It's mild. The, the, it's... Yeah, it tastes really, to me, it has a really, really good taste, but low caffeine, so you don't get the jitters from it. <laughs> That's my favorite part. And you can drink a you, you can, <laughs> oh, so you can drink a pot of it. Like normally, I just drink a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Jamaican coffee, I can drink a pot of it. Kind of sip on it for a while. Yeah, when you're drinking a lot of frozen drinks, that's probably really important to be. It gets your day kicked off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite drink? Man, the new one to me was the sky juice. So look, I'm I'm a Goombay punch. I like the Goombay, Goombay smash. smash. Yeah, that one's my favorite too. Yeah. If you get somebody to make a good one, yeah. Ooh, it's stout. Sky juice oh, that's get, liquor. <laughs> <laughs> sky juice can get stout. Okay, so sky juice, because we didn't know about it. It is a drink combining coconut water or coconut milk, condensed milk, and alcohol. A lot of times it's gin. Yeah, the, that's what it is. Yeah. It's, if you've ever had the Ochata at La Siesta, mm-hmm. it reminds me of that with gin. But you don't, it doesn't it's have that gin favorite. bite. Yeah. It was not my favorite. That's not my favorite drink, though, that I got there. Yeah. The, my, the favorite one I had was that filthy martini. 
and it was like all it was was olive juice and vodka, Tito's vodka. That's all it was. And it was and that, so but good. They would take some of the uh, what the pimento that's in the that's in the olives, and they would muddle those. The centers of the olives, they'd muddle those in the, in the shaker. Is that what they did? That's why. And then and then they would shake it with the ice. It was almost a slushy like. It had little crystals of ice in it, and no vermouth. I mean. So that's what I was thinking. Um, that's my new martini, go-to martini. The fil- she told us the fil- don't just get the dirty martini, get the filthy martini. But I like them. It's pretty much just vodka and olive juice, yeah. and I'm Who would have thought? down with that. Yeah. After seventeen pina coladas, <laughs> that, that, something about that <laughs> goes down smooth. <laughs> that's probably the best drink I had down there, though. I um, mean, other than the rum. I mean, do you count just rum? <laughs> Yeah, we tried a lot of rum. Yeah, we went to a distillery. There's John, uh, man, I can't remember the name of it. It's like Willings or something like that. Wellings. But we went, we went there one day. Did you do like a tasting where they? They we actually did. You buy like a flight. Well, they they actually as soon as you come in, they're like, all right, here's a pina colada. Drink this, <laughs> and then they tell you the history. And that of was the, the best pina colada I've ever had. Oh man, it was good. It, would it taste, tasted like pineapple whip from Disney World. <laughs> it really did. That's awesome. But with rum. <laughs> Is John um, Walt- Waltings? Walt- Walt- Waltings? Something. I don't know. Don't get me wrong. W A T L I N G S. Yeah. Waltlings or something. But it's a, it was a, um, it was an old like plantation style home that they turned into this distillery where they make rum. And they only, it's super small batch. Like they had 11 employees there. That made the rum, but they said they did like was it twenty two hundred bottles a day, wow. something like if that. If they're working fast, yeah. is what they said. And they 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 sell it at that distillery. They don't sell it like their local liquor stores. They had it at the airport, duty free stuff. But they also they they furnish all the rum for. Well, they also have their rum in Atlantis, that whole island. I don't know what that island's called, Paradise Island, maybe. It's over there, but we didn't we didn't go over there. But it's a really good man. It's it ain't cheap either. I looked, I was gonna like pick up a bottle duty free. It's like eighty bucks, and then the they had for the, the for the lower proof one. Yeah, yeah, just for the the eighty proof, they had one that was like sixty six point five percent hundred was that a hundred thirty something proof. Yeah, and we didn't try that. Well, they didn't give out samples of that. <laughs> and then we we did tell one of our uh, cab drivers about. He said, oh, "You don't want that." <laughs> He's like, "Don't don't mess with that. Yeah, one. Don't mess with that one. It's like jet fuel." <laughs> I was like, you daring me now, son? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. I've had the overproof rum before. I know what it'll do. That a kickstart a that a kickstart a rum punch there. Put an <laughs> extra shot of that on there. Would have been a concert for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have stayed in the Bahamas. I know why people do. Man, rum is delicious. <laughs> it is. It's it's like the bourbon of the tropics. Yeah. Sunshine bourbon. Like I don't want to drink. I'm not drinking, you know, whiskey drink out in the sun. Yeah. You drink rum out in the sun all day. It's like it gets better. Hotter it gets, the better the rum taste. <laughs> you were getting those rums and just bitters. Just pour me rum and that's, a little bitters. That's how I like to drink it. Rum on ice with bitters. Oh, I learned that from a Jamaican dude. That's why he said he, he said, "Man, next time you want to drink some good rum, just that's how I drink it. Rum and bitters." He said it, the bitters protects your tummy. That's right. What he said. Yep. <laughs> You don't get sick off of it. Yeah. Pro tip. Um, <laughs> you drink the sky juice and you don't get a hangover, though. Mm. That's what they claim. Because nobody wants to drink that much sky juice. <laughs> nobody it's wants to drink that water. much. The coconut yeah. water in it yeah. keeps you from getting hung over. You want some milk and gin? <laughs> <laughs> it don't sound good with nutmeg and cinnamon. It's like, this can't be good. It is. Uh, we were hanging out at the pool bar one day. Things were getting rowdy in the pool bar. People were drinking, taking shots. Oh, and these, man. These girls, uh, I don't know, it was probably four or five different girls. I blame that on the bartender. He got everybody crunk up. It, Yeah. But they hop up on this bar, and they're all in their bikinis, and they're twerking. When I'm talking bikinis, I'm talking <laughs> bikinis. <laughs> South Beach style. Uh, tell everybody what your first thought words out of your mouth were. I'm so old. <laughs> it is not what I should have said. I've never once in my life. I, 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 here's exactly what I said. Y'all better get down. You're going to fall and hurt yourself. <laughs> that don't make you old right there instantly. When you've got women and there's white. This is a big bar. 
there's three of them on one side, three get up right on the other side. Yeah. I mean, right, oh, yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> right here. And I'm worried about their safety falling. <laughs> and I immediately turned around. I said, chill. <laughs> it's time to I'm old. I'm officially old when I'm worried about these. <laughs> <laughs> These nice young ladies. It did, and it did not take security long to yeah, come get them down. down. Yeah. Was... It was very dangerous. I mean, we were in a pool, <laughs> and it was like slick, like marble tile yeah. or whatever. They got them down real quick, but that made me laugh so much. Y'all get down. You got them. They didn't even have their water shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not enough sunscreen, no SPF protection. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think I'm turning into my dad? <laughs> I just, and after it got out, I, I thought to myself, I said, self, <laughs> that is not how that should have went. <laughs> I should have been leading the charge. <laughs> yeah, in your younger days, you'd have been looking for your one. So. I'd have been up there, too. <laughs> Twerk something. <laughs> So today I wanted to talk to you about the um, lobster and the filet that you cooked. Oh, yeah. That was, we didn't call it our Valentine's thing because I was kind of, we knew we were getting ready we to We were filming it before Valentine's Day, but it didn't yeah, have time we, to come it out. It wasn't going to come out. So that was, but that was what I was thinking. Yeah. What could I cook around prepared. Valentine's time that would really, you know, if you're cooking something special for you and your lady. She's done been up on the bar and dance for everybody. <laughs> you want to make her something nice? <laughs> what would you do? And so I was, th- you know, I was like, man, steak and lobster sounds sounded great to me. And so instead of just doing like a grilled fillet, I wanted to do um, a really seared black pepper crusted cast iron, you know, style sear on the fillet, but also incorporate the grill. So I kind of reverse seared it. I, you know, I, which is I, a great idea. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you could buy fillets at the grocery store already cut. What I did was I went to Sam's and bought the whole beef tenderloin and like cut out the center part of it, the Chateaubriand, and then cut those into big steaks. How I didn't weigh them. Yeah. If I had to guess, they were probably 10 ounces. I mean, I don't want a fillet. You, you really don't want a fillet over 12. That's an awful big piece of fillet. But most of the time you see 8 to 10 on a menu, and that's a good size. I'd say inch and a half, two inch thick, something like that. That's all I did to them. Seasoned them up. Got a nice... uh. Well, you didn't have to remove anything? like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, I, you know, I, I pulled off all the sinew. You pull off the chain, cut the tail off, and I want the center cut of that beef tender one. When you buy them at the store, all that's done for you. Yeah. You pay more per pound to get the butcher. Like, say, if you go to, to Kroger and you get fillets out of the, the meat case, they've already done all the trim work for you. So they all of a sudden, they jack it up twenty four ninety nine a pound. Well, when you can go buy the whole one, they'll run that on sale. Sometimes I've seen it for, man, as low as eleven ninety nine, ten ninety nine a pound, something like that. And you're, I mean, yeah, you're gonna have some drop, but all that chain meat and that tip meat and all that stuff you trim off is still good meat. Heck yeah, it's there's nothing wrong meat. with it. Yeah, you can Burger grind meat. it and do whatever. I mean, I, I season them up and grill them in little pieces and just eat them as like little, little, little uh, pitmaster snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I, you made some bro- beef and broccoli one time yeah, with, with it. it. It was excellent. Yeah. yeah. So you you gain that, you gain the drop. Plus you're paying cheaper per pound. Plus you're cutting your own steaks to your size, and it's not hard to do. So that's what I did. That'd be a good thing for you to show a tutorial on that. I think I mean we've done it. It's probably been years ago. Yeah. How to break down? They call it the Pismo. Yeah. When you see it, it's like the whole cryovac bag of a beef tenderloin. And show how to yeah. work it's, it and get it's the yield. Really easy to do. Show what you get, what it looks like cleaned up. Because you do have some drop from the sinew and some of that, but it doesn't have a lot of fat on it. Yeah. So once I got those, I kind of olive oiled them, AP them a little bit, maybe some extra black pepper, crusted them really good with that. I mean, I want, because I want that black pepper, because it's a dense piece of meat. The fillet, the fillet doesn't have as much beefy flavor as, say, a ribeye or something that's got more marbling. It's just so it, it can take a lot of seasoning on the outside, and then you get the just the smooth beef flavor on the inside. Yeah. That's why I like to crust it like that. And so once and the I, pepper doesn't burn. That's right. The pepper doesn't burn. It can take the high heat. Um, so started my Weber grill out, two's on fire. I went ahead like and put the steaks over to the side and put a probe in them. I know I only want to go to like 100, 105 internal. And then I had my cast iron dry, no oil or anything in it over right over those coals getting screaming hot if you did this inside um you 
You could do it inside. You can still reverse sear them, take it inside and sear them on the cast iron if you didn't want to do it on the grill. Or it really wouldn't be a reverse sear. You could do it opposite. Well, I ain't really going to get into that. But just know that I have my cast iron over those hot coals ripping hot. Why dry? Um, because you don't, the oil can burn in it because we're getting it hot. I mean, if I had yeah. to, if I, I bet if I shot the infrared on that, it was probably 550 degrees. Okay. And so you put oil in 550 degrees like that. And for, you know, for 15 minutes or however long it took those steaks to come up, which was about 15, 20 minutes, it would have burned up. It would create this like black tarry yeah. stuff in the bottom of it. Give your meat a bad flavor. So you just want dry cast iron. Now, when I got my steaks up to temp after 15, 20 minutes, I went ahead and put them down, just one side down in that cast iron and started letting it get a sear. Because, I mean, there's moisture cooking out of that steak. I wanted it to get that crust on it. And as it started doing that, that's when I added a little bit of butter. And you're going pretty fast at this point because it's not going to take them long to come up. You're basically kissing them at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah, it's not long. It was, if I had to put a time frame on it, you're looking minute and a half, two minutes tops per side to get that crust at that temperature. And you, you can are. always, like, it's easy to overshoot it because I did a couple batches and I overshot some of it. I mean, it was. It was little, it was more medium or, you know, yeah. more. I wanted them rare because that's how I like to eat them. And that's why it only takes like a minute and a half, two minutes. But I throw in a few pats of butter. I have me some cloves of garlic sitting there, some sprigs of thyme and rosemary. And once I flip that steak over, once it goes a minute and a half, two minutes, flip it over and start. And I, I use like some grill gloves or something, pick that skillet up a little bit kind of tilt it, get my butter splashing all over the top, getting that working on it. It's kind of brown and sizzling. And if you saw and if you saw the video, you could tell that when I picked that steak up, it was just the whole top of it, that buttery kind of crispy bubbling was going on on top of that crust of that black pepper. And man, I'd put that steak up. It's it's with the I mean it's as good as any ribeye. It's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know about ribeye. Yeah. Know. So you don't like to fillet as much as the ribeye, do you? Uh when it's cooked right, like you're talking about, yeah. yeah, it's good, but no. So that was one half of the dish, the filet. Now I did the lobster tails, too, and I bought lobster tails at Sam's. They were froze. I mean, you know, we don't – I'm in right outside of Memphis in, in Hernando, Mississippi. We don't have the best seafood here. How Most hard of it's was fresh it? or yeah. froze. How hard was it to find the lobster? Um, We went one day, and they didn't have any, but you could tell they were fixing to have them because Valentine's was coming up. There was a spot for them. So the next morning, I got up and went up there early, and they had it full of lobster tails. And they came in this like this tray pack of like six. What I was think the price was on that? Forty five bucks. Oh, okay. But some of, there was like three good sized lobster tails, and then three what I would call small lobster tails, which is perfect if you're cooking them for, you know, you and your lady, because you get the big ones. Or <laughs> <laughs> she might not want the big tails. She might. You might settle for three little tails. I don't know. <laughs> but what I did with those, I was I did them on a grill as well. I did them on my Traeger. Now this this could be done in the oven. I love the meth this method. It, to me, it's like you've cooked shrimp, kind of a similar method. Yeah. And it allows you to cook it slowly, so you don't overcook. That's it. That's right. That's why I like it. The big part of it was the presentation. Yeah. So you take these tails, they and you got to let them beautiful. thaw out. So if you buy them and let them sit in the refrigerator and slow thaw, the meat doesn't get broke up as bad. If you do, you can speed thaw them, but when you speed thaw them, you need to do it in ice water. Don't put them in like straight water out of the faucet. It'll the the meat um, thaws out too much too fast, and it can get mushy on you. It changes the texture of lobster. Lobster is a super delicate meat, and it's so hard. Like some people struggle with it, or sometimes you order it out of a restaurant and it's tough. That's why people don't like it. But if it's done right, it's delicate and it'll melt in your mouth. And so that's what I was going for. So I took the tails and I took some kitchen shears and like cut straight down the top shell all the way to the back fin, made a split in it. And then you carefully use both your thumbs and kind of crack that open a little bit. You're not trying to break the shell away. You're just trying to get to the meat inside and you can kind of put your thumbs or your fingers in there and work the meat away from the shell. And at the very back of it where the fin is, there's two little sections of that lobster tail that I pull off. And that gives me the room to pull that meat out the back and set it right back up on top of the shell. And what that does, it gives you a buffer to where your meat's got that shell for protection. It's not getting super, super direct heat. It's kind of cooking indirect on top of it. And it allows you to get flavor on the meat itself. And it's pretty. But and it's pretty, yeah. I just As you were explaining that, I was thinking, I wonder if you know it helps the cooking process because yeah. you're 
creating that barrier. It does. Eight. It does. Yeah. So it's presentation and it, it, it helps you from overcooking it. Yeah. If you cooked it in the shell, it's super easy to get lobster overcooked because you got to heat that shell up so much. Then once you get it heated up, it's radiating heat. So if you don't, if you take it, say it needs to go to about 145 serving temp. But if you cook it to 145, you've nuked it because it, it's going to carry over, especially as hot as that yeah. shell gets. And so that's I imagine a big part of it. It w- doesn't cook as even in the shell. You yeah, know, yeah, as it was sitting up on top. Because the pieces closest to the that's shell right. is going to get hotter. Huh. So I kind of made up this butter mixture, melted some butter and put some herbs, some of my king crawl in it, basted that all over the top of that lobster and seasoned it with a little more of that king crawl and put them in an iron skillet. And then I took another stick of butter and cut them up in pats and put them around because I wanted some extra butter to drizzle over them and to dip the bread in. And the steak was good in it too, but mind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what they did. They went on the smoker. Uh, I put them on my, uh, I think I had the Gorilla going for that one, didn't I, Tyler? The yep. Gorilla Silverback, um, 350, just in the skillet and just kept watching them. I mean, it's not a long cook at all. It was, I think, 30, 35 minutes tops. But I used my thermal pen and I watched it. When it got to like 138, 140, that's when I took that pan off and just let it sit on the counter. And those lobsters carried over, and they would melt in your mouth. They weren't tough. They weren't chewy. It was just had, had flavor. Had, had flavor. Had plenty of you know. Basted them with that butter a few times during the cook. I mean, they just it's, it's super easy, man. It really it's was really easy. It really was, and it's you know. So we just got back from the Hamas, and we tried lobster a couple oh, times wasn't, down there. Wasn't even close. Was wasn't it? even close. I had a good lobster at the steakhouse down there. I had a surf and turf. My turf was pretty good. It was done very similar to the way I did it, except I think they sous vide it because it's the only way they could have nailed that doneness the way they did. Ordered it rare, and it was fork tender. Didn't have the pepper crust on the outside, but it had flavor, you know. But their lobster tail, and you get it out of the lobster, it was a cold water tail just like I was doing, but it was tougher, and it didn't have all that buttery goodness on it. it yeah, it was kind of you know, plain. It was just kind of plain, you know. So, and I think a lot of people, when they try lobster, they're like, Ew. Yeah, that's not The first few times I tried it. Yeah. It's not like I grew up eating lobster, you know? Right. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it myself, and it was delicious. Like, yeah. Best I've ever I'm gonna, had. I'm going to tell you, the cold water lobster is way better than warm water water lobster. It just has a different texture, a different feel. I mean, And they're bigger, right? Yeah. it's Typically, they're bigger. I mean, I'm sure you can still get some small ones. But if you're thinking like lobster rolls and the big whole main lobsters that you know you see on the Red Lobster commercials, all those, <laughs> yeah. it ain't that good at that restaurant, but it is that good if you probably – Go go buy you some cold water lobster. Or go to a restaurant that specializes in it. I'd re- I prefer the cold water lobster when you can get it. Yeah. We just don't get it very often. We need to make a trip. Oh, I want to do that so bad. Research R and D. Who has the best lobster rolls in <laughs> yeah. Upper East Coast? I've never had a lobster roll. A real one? No. Yeah. My wife's got a down <clears throat> hat. Does she oh, really? Because both of our families are from up north, so like. Pretty much everywhere from like Maine all the way down to like Vermont, Massachusetts, like everywhere, and cold, hot, lot. Like, do you guys have a preference on lobster rolls? Like, cold I need or hot? it delicious. Yeah. yeah, she likes hot lobster tails with the, the melted most. butter drizzled all over it, yeah. the toasted roll and stuff like yeah. that. There's a food truck locally called Cousins Maine Lobster yeah. that's like similar, but it's still not quite as authentic as. So we're where do you, she makes those at home now? Where does she get her lobster? Yeah, where she stores it. Oh no no no! So she's just a professional of eating them. She oh <laughs> oh! I thought you said she had it down to make them. Yeah, she I got it down to where to go <laughs> up there. So if we go <laughs> take a little trip up there, then yeah. Have y'all? So you been up there? To eat? I mean, that's where you live. You mm-hmm. live, I guess. God. Yep. We used to eat it all the time. I gotta go. But you were not a fan of it growing up. I was not a fan. My whole family, the rest of my family was, but I'm just, I don't know. I was like weird with seafood for a long time, and then I yeah. kind of started opening up to it recently. The only thing that puts me off on it is when they use too much tarragon. Yeah. That's a real, like, I don't know, licorice taste in it. It overpowers what I want on my lobster roll. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I want the. I want maize, more of the. <laughs> I want more of the uh, butter in the. Uh, <laughs> I like the Cajun the goodness, seasoning you yeah. use. It, it works. And then there's some places that won't toast the roll, and that is like I feel like even if you're eating it cold, personally, I would rather have the toasted roll in the bottom. Yeah, you need the texture. Yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta cut that bottom piece off to where it makes the bottom of the roll flat, where it'll stand up, and then the top split. You can't just you know that's how you do it. You can't be just can no do, side cut hot dog bun. <laughs> can you can you do um, butter 
and mayonnaise in your lobster roll? Is that a thing? I mean, you could do whatever you wanted. <laughs> I think you could do it. Butter lobster roll. <laughs> Butter lobster roll. Yeah. Or make your lobster because roll. Because it's really like the cold one's yeah. more like lobster salad. Yeah. yeah. You know, you mix it up with mayonnaise, and they probably put some celery in there. What what all tradition? Tarragon, mayo, and stuff. It's like Where a they aioli, put eggs right? and sweet pickles. Mm, no. It doesn't, <laughs> it's it doesn't not a southern that. salad. It's not like tuna salad. <laughs> <laughs> not. I think it is just really simple. Like, I do definitely yeah. know it has lemon. Mayonnaise, butter, it's got a lemon. citrus element. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times they'll serve it with lemon on the side, too, so yeah. you can get a fresh squeeze over the top. But it's just real simple. But The best ones are just lobster and a little mayo, not much filler. Yeah. Mm. You know? If you get the good, good lobster. Yeah. But the roll is like super important. I don't know what they call those rolls specifically, but they're like, you know, they have kind of the open face on the side, but it's not like you said a cut hot dog bun. That yeah. It looks yeah. like that. Yeah. Has that appearance, but. I've seen them where they take, like, if you use a hot dog bun, they'll slice off the bottom part to where it makes it flat and you can turn it over, toast it, and then your slits turn sitting straight up. Yeah. And it lets you load it from the top. Because you don't load a lobster roll from the side. It's always from a, a real, you know. The one that I've seen in the pictures that interests me the most almost looks like two pieces of garlic bread on the side, <laughs> you know. Yeah. There you go. Garlic lover's lobster roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where the bread's holding all the butter and all that. Um, I want the one where it's got the big claws in it, the double claw meat, you know. you got two claws and a tail in every roll. You want a fifty dollar sandwich? I want a fifty dollar sandwich. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Two pound lobster, <laughs> smothered with a little blue plate. We need to make that for TikTok, like a big, like southern southern style lobster <laughs> yeah. roll. Be a or, good one. Um, what about using crawfish? You could. Place? You could do crawfish we get rolls. Crawfish. Oh yeah, it's we'll about do that. Crawfish season. <laughs> I, I was thinking the exact same thing. Probably got my so I got these guys. I get um, Porter Seafood here locally. And they, they, you sign up, if you buy a crawfish from them or whatever, they'll put you on their little uh, text list. And every week, like Monday comes, you're waiting on crawfish price. And it's like, all right, you got to get your order in for Thursday. It's going to be this much per pound this week. And I've got kind of my dot, you know, when it when it hits, it's, like, it's got to be, I mean. What are they at right now? Have you got 385, I think. A pound? Yeah. For live. For live. For yeah. live. 385 for live. A few weeks ago, they were like, Seven bucks. I mean, they weren't even selling them because they know they can't sell them at that price. But yeah. they they start you see see some of the trucks start selling cooked at like eight dollars a pound. I ain't paying eight dollars a pound. <laughs> so I'm waiting till they come limit? down. Where, where's your price break? I'll get me a sack at three fifty. I won't like it, but I'll get me a sack <laughs> at three fifty. I prefer them to be like two fifty, two and a quarter. Man, that's great crawfish prices when you can get them there. Now, if you're down in Louisiana. Those guys sometimes they'll get them down as low as a dollar, dollar yeah. twenty five. But they're not having to haul them up. They're not having to haul them this way yeah. and keep them alive and cool and all that. So, I get that. That's why I'm willing to pay two dollars two twenty five. I'll probably buy the majority of them at two fifty two seventy five, just because that's when we really we get into eating them. But after Easter, the price drops. But usually, we've ate crawfish to where we don't want any more after Easter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they'll sell them all the way to the end of May. Yeah. Not that, really that that, yeah, when the that shells point. start getting hard, you know, the crawfish are bigger, so they're they're just I don't know, I don't like fighting them that much. And I you know, it, they're still okay, but I don't want the monster ones. I want those medium sized crawfish. That's Me the ones too. where the heads get full of the seasoned juice, the tail pops right out. You don't tear your you know, they're they're easy to eat. It's a New Year's resolution of mine this year that I'm gonna try else crawfish because let you, you didn't try them last year? No. Dude. I just like, there's something about cracking it open and all that good stuff that I usually don't oh, like. You got to get do. over that. Oh. This year is going to be the year. Yeah. So. You got to get over that. Do you drink beer? I do. Okay. <laughs> I do. You need a few beers to go with it. I don't know. There's something about the crawfish and the heat and the cold beer and the. So good. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part is usually the potatoes, sausage, corn, yeah. like side stuff. stuff but... Yeah. Yeah. Crawfish is the star of the show. Yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. But it's the flavor. So if the crawfish flavor is better than all of the vegetables that are in it, then that's why I got to try it. Oh, it is. That's where it's, that's where all the flavor is. <laughs> all the flavor. You just scrape the poop off and <laughs> pop it in <laughs> your mouth. Not, it's not poop. <laughs> that's where the flavor is, anyway. I usually just sit my truly in the corner and say, it. <laughs> <laughs> "You say, can I have corn and potatoes, please? <laughs> Eating my corn and sausage." <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Your cheap crawfish date. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Yep. I need eight pounds for myself. My little buddy here will just take some sides. <laughs> a little truly drinker. Will take <laughs> potato, sausage, and corn. Yeah. There was a, a restaurant in South Haven where we used to go that would do all you can eat crawfish. Oh, they had to cancel that program. <laughs> y'all, y'all shut them down. The bowling point. Man, it was great. It wasn't just us. It was a, yeah. yeah. A bunch of people. So um, I've got some tips. It's time for Shell's learning time. Shell's learning time. <laughs> all right. I'm always open for tips. So I follow this um, test kitchen on TikTok, which is really cool. It's a great account. Um, but they were talking about how to use baking soda to tenderize meat. Are you familiar with this? I've seen I've seen some people do some videos of it, different techniques for tenderizing. Um, you know that that's one. Uh, fresh kiwis one, pineapple. Yeah. Uh, There's was other it bromelain methods. that's in pineapple that the people yeah. use. That's what yeah. a lot of meat tenderizers are made out of. Yeah. Um, this is actually called velvetined by doing it. Chinese cooking does it a lot. Um, but. If you briefly soak meat in a solution of baking soda and water, it actually raises the pH on the meat surface, makes it more difficult for the proteins to bond, which keeps the meat tender and moist when it's cooked. I'm going to have to try it out. Yeah. Well, see, that would be one that would be good to test on like a tough cut of meat. Yes, and they recommended like, a London broil, actually. Really? Okay. I could do that. See if you get a London broil where it's sliced and it eats like a, say, a sirloin or a strip or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you wouldn't want to do that on a steak that's normally tender. Yeah, well, you wouldn't want to do that on a ribeye, but in a, my opinion. But a lesser cut or, say, you just had like a, just old choice grade that you got at Walmart or something like that. You want to try to get it a little more tender. I did see, uh, I don't know if it was in our community or where it was on Facebook, but someone said they had. Had a had a cow processed, and you know they got steaks out of it and all that, and their steaks were tough, and they wanted to know what they could do, what everybody was doing to get their steaks tender when they bought a processed cow. Well, were first people thing, chiming in? Um, I didn't go that deep in it. Yeah, it just got me to thinking immediately. I was like, you know, I wonder if they let that meat hang, because a lot of times, say, if you take some beef to get it processed, they're just they're just gonna cut it up right then, package it, give it right back to you. It's turnaround time. Well, it's best when it's aged. So we all we all know that, you know, thirty days is great for aging beef. So and a lot of these processors will take it, they'll they'll take it, cut it off, quarter it out, hook it on the big hook, it goes in a cooler and it sits there for a few several weeks. So it's you're talking like there's a shoulder of beef or a yeah. hind quarter of yeah. beef. Just hanging. And you let it hang for th- Yeah, you let so what happens, it kinda it lets it go through rigor and then I don't know if it's the Whatever kind of acid that's in the meat, the lactic acid that builds yeah. up, starts breaking it down, and that's what makes it tender. So you need that's what aging does. I mean, you know, it's kind of breaking it down from the inside out, and that's why you get more tender. Typically, more tender beef has been aged somewhat. So when I buy briskets, I like them to have that thirty day age on them, and that's why you, if you buy by the case, you can see when they were packed. You know how long you can let them sit. So it's a big thing, and so that's. That's what I got to thinking. But but what you're talking about, baking soda stuff, that's kind of a little cheat way to stimulate that real fast. Yeah. This but one, I wonder if it changes the flavor of it. I, well, this one says you dissolve baking soda in water. Um, use a teaspoon to every half a cup of water um, for every 12 ounces of meat. So that's your kind of ratio. So you're just making like... A slurry. Uh, yeah, it's more of a basic water solution, yeah. marinade. Instead of being on the acid range, you're ch- you're adding that baking soda and it's neutralizing it, taking it yeah, I guess above so. seven. Yeah, so you soak it for at least fifteen minutes, depending, I guess, on the cut and stuff. And then you remove the meat, rinse it off, and then you season it, and cook it normal. Yeah. Oh, we're trying that. Cook as I when you do it with chicken, which is used a lot in like Asian cooking, they call it velveting. Well, you know, so like say velveting you buy chicken. sweet and sour chicken, that chicken. I don't know what kind of life it lived, but it's different texture. <laughs> yes. Do you think it's because they velveted it? Yes. You know what I'm talking about. It's almost like, it, is it processed? Is it, it's like it's altered, that yes. type meat. I, and I can see that. Texture. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times um, with Chinese. Maybe they're buying cheap chicken and just doing that to it. And Cheap chicken. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting the old chickens. It's rooster, the rooster. It's rooster meat. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting the rooster meat. But um, in Chinese stir fries, by marinating it with they they use sometimes egg whites and cornstarch, which yeah is 
Is it, does that does cornstarch do the same thing as I wouldn't think it did the same thing as baking soda, as far as lowering the pH or I don't know. They still consider, it, I guess, velveting, velveting too. Yeah. I'll have to go back to my research. Yeah, right. no, that's very interesting. It's very interesting. Stay tuned to next week. I like tenderizing <laughs> tips. Now we're gonna have you know steak cookers trying to change yeah. the texture of ribeyes. Oh, they do that. I mean, a lot of guys do it. They, a lot of them do it with meat tenderizer. Yeah. I've heard butchers do it. Like these butchers that run these, you know, pick five types or five ribeyes for 20 bucks or whatever. They're buying like select cut ribeyes, cutting them, putting them in a, you know, a big meat lug, putting meat tenderizer over them, letting them sit for a week before they sell them or however long. A week. I don't know how long. Yeah. I'm just guessing. But that, I mean, it's it happens. Yes. And then they sell them, and the people think, oh, man, these cheap steaks, but they're tender. It's, it's because they've done something to them to make them tender, and you don't uh, realize it. So they might be doing some kind of solution like that. You wouldn't have to set them as long as if it only takes 15 minutes. Well, they said at least. Yeah. So, you know, I guess it depends we on do how some far. Test, we got to do some test kitchen stuff so on that. I think so, too. I don't, I don't know if I follow that account. I need to check that out. Yeah, it's a really informative, yeah. you know, well done. I also saw a guy on TikTok who marinated his chicken wings and pickle juice. No, that's that's what uh, Chick Fil A does. I checked it out. They don't. No, they do. They do not. <laughs> Why does it have that pickle flavor? Because of the pickles. Because they put them two. There's no way <laughs> two little hamburger deal weak pickle slices <laughs> could give that Chick Fil A sandwich that much pickle flavor. I put two pickle sa- two pickle slices on a bologna sandwich. It don't taste like that. <laughs> Order it without it. Yeah, see, see yeah that's a good... That there you go, Tyler. Order it without it. Oh, oh, here's one for you. Chick-fil-A mayo versus blue plate. What do you think? Blue plate's the best mayonnaise on the planet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you Chick-fil-A mayonnaise might be blue. No, it's probably Duke's. No, it's not. Uh, they, you think they make their own mayonnaise just for Chick-fil-A? No. It's some commodity mayo. Yeah, it's They're some commodity packaged. mayo. Yeah. It's probably Aldi mayo. Chick fil A mayo is not bad, though. Like out of the pack. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to a restaurant and you can't get blue plate. Yeah. If you don't travel with your own squeeze bottle of blue plate, <laughs> go to Chick fil A. Because we have been held, it is chef stable. I don't know if it's purse stable, though. <laughs> See, it's risky carrying around mayonnaise packets in your purse. <laughs> <laughs> they, go to, they go to grease real quick, don't they? You never know when one's going to bust, a pen's going to rupture one. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> an earring. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Then you got a whole different situation. You Everything's for- greasy. <laughs> you forget <laughs> about it for a while, and then you go back in there, and you're like, what is <laughs> What's going on in there? Blue plate? <laughs> <laughs> I've never found blue plate in a like small... That's a good thing. I don't, yeah, I never have any. Yeah, travel pack. Kind of like the little airplane bottles of like Fireball. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I need that. Huh. Hit us up, Blue Plate. It's like Gringo to go. <laughs> I put Gringo in a small bottle and keep it in my purse for when we go to the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> That's a fact. And often we send Michael back out to the car. <laughs> Let's see if there's a bottle of Gringo in there. <laughs> you got to, you know. What do y'all do with the Gringo at the Mexican restaurant? Just out of curiosity. Salsa. Everything. Yeah. Chip, it goes on chips first, tortilla chips first, then you doctor up your salsa. Then if your entree comes out and it's bland, you hit it with a little more on top. And then after about that third Rita, just get them to rim the glass with it. You've done made friends, and so you just send the bottle back there. Y'all rim my next glass with that. And keep that for yourself. <laughs> keep that, yeah. I know where you can get more. <laughs> kind of a great selling point, too. And then people see you doing it. It's like, what are y'all doing? Y'all bring your own seasoning? Well, just so happen to have this extra bottle, right? Yeah. There you go. Try it. Bring your own seasoning. <laughs> we do. A lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> so um, right now we are running a contest in our Let's Get to Cooking Facebook community. What's, what is the next contest? It's going on right now. Yep. So we got uh, four recipes up right now. It's a like if you go to the Let's Get to Cooking community page on Facebook, it's gonna be at the top. It's like a pinned post by How to BBQ, right? And uh, you know, there's a bunch of little text in there that just says it's running until February twenty eighth at eleven fifty nine. February twenty eighth. We have four uh different recipes that Malcolm's cooked in the past and we basically just wanna know like what is your favorite to recreate. Um, and then all you gotta do is go down in the comment section, let us know, and then we're gonna pick ten people to win a jam and jerk, an island fire hot sauce, and a burn 'em down hot sauce. So it's kind of like our island giveaway. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. 
So these are your four recipes that you got to pick. What's your favorite? Okay. Let me pick. I'm going to pick my favorite. Okay. Big Mon Jerk Burger. Do you remember that one? Yeah, do I? That one is, if you ever have a burger contest, use that recipe and do it exactly. Um, okay, Jerk Shrimp. Fine. Do you remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> it's not as good as the burger. Um, Jerk Pork Chops. Do you remember that one? Yes. That's when you use like the Santa Maria attachment. Mm-hmm. And a jerk belly, uh, jerk pork belly burnt ends. The burgers tops all those. I think so too. All of them. The, but the, and I like the pork. As though. far as a bite, no, even not as even as far as a bite. And I like but, the pork chop. Yeah, the jerk mon burger is that's better than all those. I think so too. As far as a bite goes, the, the jerk pork belly bites would be number two. Mm, pork chops three, shrimp four. Well, uh, shrimp are pretty good. Shrimp but... are good, but they don't compare. You're not going to compare that shrimp to that burger, or to the pork belly bites. That burger was a yeah. The burger looks like a lot of steps, but it looks like one of those things that if you put the time into it, it would be really. It has really the good. calypso sauce on it. Yeah, and it's got a um. <laughs> well, you can make with the grilled fire. pineapple salsa. Yeah. So, like, the good thing about like all that, the elements. Yeah, the good thing about that recipe, if you were going to enter a burger contest. You could do all the, make your salsa, have your calypso sauce. You already have all your elements, so it'd be really, really easy to put together. Grilled burger, toast in a bun. Mm-hmm. I have to try that one. That and the grilled one. pineapple salsa is just good on its own. Oh man, <laughs> it really is delicious. It'd be good on jerk pork sandwich, like yeah, jerk pulled pork with that salsa. You tried a pulled pork sandwich down there. I the did. So I had. They had one of the little food trucks at our resort had a uh, had a pulled pork sandwich on it, um, and I guarantee you they cooked it in a crock pot. <laughs> Never saw <laughs> it smoke. Tasted like <laughs> the pulled pork that I grew up eating, <laughs> but with a horrible barbecue it's like sauce. Yeah, sloppy Joe barbecue yes. is best way to ex- explain that. What the heck? But I mean, then you added conch salad to it. Yeah, it helped. It gave it more texture with the conch salad on it. Gave it some freshness. Yeah. yeah. The best part of that was the fries it came with. <laughs> <laughs> I also tried, so they have a little island there that you ferry over to. And we would go over there and they had a, a barbecue ribs. So I did ribs and jerk chicken. And they were like, instead of ordering both, I said, could you, like, I want a little of each on the plate and I don't really want the sides. She said, I can do that. So she brought me out like three bones of ribs and then the jerk chicken. Well, the jerk chicken was once again sauced and it was okay. It was, you Spicy know. barbecue chicken is what yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. But then the ribs, if you've ever seen the pigs that swim on the beach, I think that's what they <laughs> do with them when they can't swim no more. <laughs> because they were not the best ribs either. I mean, they were, they were tender, but once again, there's no smoke. You know, it's just. And a bad barbecue Just because sauce. you put barbecue sauce on some meat does not make it barbecue. <laughs> Do you agree with me on that? 100%. Just because, you know. Especially if it's bad barbecue yeah. sauce. And just because you cook it till it falls off the bone does not make it good <laughs> yeah. barbecue either. <laughs> it tastes like they took some old po- pork, put it in a crock pot. For three days. <laughs> on ultra low or something. <laughs> it wasn't good. Yeah. So, um. Talking about the community, uh, I thought this was great. Um, someone, I guess, had wrote into the Archdiocese of New Orleans. You know, now Mardi Gras is over. It's officially Lent. Yep. You can't eat red meats on Fridays. Is that why I'm not eating anything this weekend? Yeah. yeah. Of Lent? <laughs> is that correct? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You got to go to fish on Fridays. So someone actually wrote into the Archdiocese of New Orleans and had a question about eating um, meat during Lent. And they said alligator is okay. Gator's okay. It, they consider it part of the fish family, and you're good. Yeah. They don't have gills just because it lives in the water. <laughs> Pretty sure it's a rip. What about off. water buffalo? Could you, could you eat that? <laughs> Hippo. What about yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> Mantatees. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I just thought that was. What about those pigs that swim? <laughs> are they okay? Are they fair game? They're in the ocean. Can this pig swim? Ocean pig. He's good to go on Fridays. <laughs> Maybe that's why they started putting them out there in the water, so, so they could eat them on Fridays. Give them an excuse. <laughs> no, he they swim them all week, yeah. but on Fridays they eat them. It is. It's catfish on Fridays, Tom. Huh? Yeah, it's fish yeah. Fridays. Um. 
Okay, so Hank wanted to know, what is the best size charcoal vortex for a 22 and a half inch Weber? Small. And is there much difference between small and medium? Uh, No, but you it's going to heat it up extremely hot enough. If you use the small, you get all the heat and you get a little bit more cooking surface where you're not so close to the, the top of the dome of the vortex. So I like that. So it lets me put a little more chicken wings on there. So the medium will work. It gets to crowding it a little bit because those great those coals get a little closer to your cooking grate, but I think the small is the idea. There's not very many instances where you need the, the, the large, up. especially you don't really need it. That's the mistake I made first one, <laughs> but then the medium. I mean, I don't even see why you would need it. Small is the way to go, unless you have like a king ranch. Oh, the king ranch, I'd probably put the large in because yeah. you got plenty of surface in that. But that's one of the. Even like the XL green egg doesn't need the large vortex. You can still get it by with a small or a medium in it. Okay. But I would go small just because you got more options. Yeah, you can use it in multiple things. Yeah, yeah. If you have a ceramic grill, it's perfect for it. It'll work in the Weber. It'll work in any kind of dome-shaped grill like that. So next week, we're filming a YouTube video. It'll be YouTube next week. It won't release next week, though. No. I don't know if we have anything to release next week, do we? Uh, we might try to grab something this weekend. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. What do you feel like cooking this weekend? I don't After you just told me, yeah. Juice cleanse. <laughs> this is, how this is my cleanses. juice cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> I might add some vinegar sauce to my juice cleanse. How about that? <laughs> it's not cleanse. Nobody wants to know how you cleanse. <laughs> it's just like ponchos, cheese dip. <laughs> That's not a cleanse. That's an anti cleanse. <laughs> But so, what do you got in mind for next week? Um, for your next big recipe, you know, I'm feeling some ribs. I'm really, I'm feeling some ribs. It's about time to to put some smoke in there. So I think that's what I'm gonna work on. I don't know what recipe. I mean, it probably might just be something simple. I'm just feeling cooking some ribs. I hadn't cooked any uh, on a smoker in a, in a minute. You know, it's been winter coming out of it. So you got an I'm idea thinking. what smoker you're leaning towards? Uh, you know, I hadn't thought about that far. Probably a stick burner, though. Probably outlaw. I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah. They get the best texture. Oh, yeah. On the stick burner, I think. I don't think I'm going to go. I'm probably going to go savory. I think I'm going savory rib. I'm liking every bit of this. You liking all of it? <laughs> I like where this is going. Uh, I like a savory rib, and I like to dip a little salt Yeah, on, on the, the side. side. On the side. Maybe that's what we'll do. Oh. You know what I haven't done? And I've done the sausage season on the pork butt, but on ribs, that would be dynamite. That is a really good idea. I have to add. Have you ever done that before? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I know how good it is on pork butt. Yeah. You have to watch it because ribs is thinner, so you don't want to overpower them with it. Yeah. But that's what I'm, I might. Well, that might be the next one. We'll try that and see. Sausage season pork yeah, ribs. Yeah. But this might be super secret ribs. Super secret I use, ribs. I use, Don't I use sausage nobody. seasoning. Yeah. yeah nobody will believe you. <laughs> Don't What's tell that nobody. unique flavor? It's so good. Yeah, mm. it's what so is good. it? But that might be what I do there. I don't know. I got I got all weekend to think about it. We'll prep that up and might do a test batch Monday or Tuesday, and then we'll film the video and see how they turn out. They may suck. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it may be horrible. Hey, maybe Maybe that's the video. Is it good on them or not? Yeah. I like those does it work type approaches. Yeah. I've been wanting you to do a, a series on trying to uh, achieve that smoked salmon. Oh, the duplicate. Yeah, that cold. Like, I got a, man, that's been, you know, that's my nemesis. You I finally it got time. it figured out. I finally got it, the hot version figured out in the air fryer. <laughs> like, you can't touch that salmon. That salmon is, if I can eat it three times a week, it is good. And it's, I mean, if my son will eat it and eat every bit of it and want more, it is good. So. That salmon speaks for itself, but the cold smoke, like you would serve with a bagel and cream cheese, that's I've never been able to do that. You've tried it one time, turned into cat food, it was a horrible failure, <laughs> and you were like, "Well, so much for salmon." <laughs> never doing that again. But I do like it. I mean, when it's cooked right, to me, it tastes like this was applewood smoked salmon, and it had it was there was no fish taste at all to it. If I had to compare it to anything, it was almost like not ham, but bacon-esque just that richness yes. of it and it just kind of melts in your mouth it's no weird texture or anything and that's i don't know if i can 
that's what I want to learn to do. It might take, I mean. And that's the whole point. It's an yeah. evolution. It's a learning process. Anybody has any tips on how to get that? Yes. Maybe we do that to the. Yeah. I might post that in the community. How do they, how do they create that salmon? Anybody has, yeah, a really good cold oh. smoked salmon method. Then you need a really good knife to slice it super thin. Yeah. You can do it. I can do it. I believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Malk, that's all I have for today. All right. Well, Tyler, where? Uh, what all does everybody need to know? Uh, just make sure you guys get your comments in on the giveaway we're doing on the Let's Get to Cooking community page. And if you guys are listening to this on the YouTube channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And if you want to check out all of Malcolm's favorite recipes, head over to howtobbqright.com or h2qshop.com. Chill. They can find us at How to Barbecue Right everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where can they find you? Oh, don't. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, look. don't even look. She's on Insta. <laughs> Someone did uh, recognize me. They recognize Malcolm, of course, but they were like, and that's Miss Southern Shale. <laughs> like, oh, crap. I got to quit doing that. Oh, man. I, hey, I about <laughs> fanned out. There was a Vikings player there, Harry Phillips, who was a defensive tackle, I believe. He was him and his wife were vacationing at Sandals. That's awesome. Brian, our buddy that went with us, he talked to you. They ended up riding the little ferry boat with them and they were on the same floor and in the hotels they were. So he talked to him several times, but I never went up and said anything to him. I saw him. It's a big old dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking mean as hell. <laughs> Some woman caught me looking at him. Like we were at the bar and he was on one side of the bar. He was standing up there like, I don't know, Superman or something, you know, I'm muscled <laughs> up, tattooed. And I was looking at him sitting over there, and I was trying to look tough and blown up. <laughs> and some, some lady was standing in between us, and she just looked at me and nodded her head and smiled. Like I, so. So I got that dude. <laughs> I shouldn't have told that. <laughs> anyway, well, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us, and we'll be back next week to talk more barbecue and all kinds of fun stuff. We're gone.